Close to 9 in 10 voters say Indigenous Australia should have a say over matters affecting them. That's despite the voice referendum's failure in the last month. That's according to an ANU-led study of more than 4,000 voters. The survey suggests it was the proposed model rather than recognition that was voted down. The opposition continues to question what the PM's going to do next on other elements of the Uluru Statement from the Heart. It's over one month since Australians emphatically rejected the Albanese government's divisive voice proposal. Will the Prime Minister confirm the Albanese Labor government still remains committed to implementing treaty and truth-telling? We respect the outcome that was made uh, on October the 14th. Uh, prior to October the 14th, I stood at this dispatch box and they were trying to say that what people were voting on was treaty. They might recall that. And I indicated at this dispatch box that that wasn't what people were voting on, that indeed uh, treaty negotiations are underway at state level. Joining me live is Professor Nicholas Biddle, Associate Director of the ANU Centre for Social Research and Methods and co-author of this study. Thanks for your time. The findings are, well, I must say, Thanks even to me, on. pretty surprising. So the support for some form of voice is something like 90%. Now, the way that's asked, is that a very broad question that I guess that can get everyone in, whether you support a, the constitutional element, um, non-legislated, legislated? Is that the explanation for why it's so high? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it could be a legislative voice. It could be a local um, uh, community-based voice. Uh, or it could be, um, as you said, it could include also those who were supportive of the constitutional uh, voice to parliament. So what we ultimately wanted to do is try and get uh, as good an understanding as we can and share that understanding with the, with the community of what people thought about some more broader principles rather than the very specific question mm. which was on the referendum. Um, and the interesting thing is it's not just kind of yes voters who uh, were um, strongly in favour of, of Indigenous Australians having a voice on matters which affect them. Even three quarters yeah. of no voters were in support. So I don't think there was a re uh, there just, was not a yeah, rejection just that as well. of... Yep. And I want, I want to ask you this because people will be asking um, me probably. So this was weighted. Sure. So 60% yep. or so of respondents yep. actually voted no in, um, uh, in the referendum. Correct. Yes. You, yeah, yeah. You, so, you, so this you is... weighted it so you had the same yep. number of respondents. Exactly. Yep. So what, what we made sure is that we had a sample and a an estimate which lined up with the um, uh, with the the final vote in the on the fourteenth of October. Uh, and so then we can see well, okay, conditional on what people said to the um, to the actual referendum question. What are their views on a range of other issues? Um, because I think that's important for us to, as a community, to um, uh, to you know, make uh, future decisions on uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander policy uh, based on a kind of people's views on on a broad set of issues, not just mm. the the narrow question which was asked in the referendum. What what did you what were you able to find out around why it did? fail then because there's been endless speculation and sort of analysis what's your view yeah. having conducted this yeah so look i think there's there's a couple of things uh one is um the the fact that um uh, people thought thought it was quite uh, a risky uh, proposition uh we know that with referendum uh, people not only need to be convinced that it's a it's a reasonable idea uh, but they also have to be convinced that it's it's not going to have adverse effects because uh, if you vote someone in uh, at an election, uh, you can change that in the next election. It's very it's much harder to do that with a referendum. So that was one is kind of that risk. The second is I think the um, the view that uh, um, Australia, that one group of Australians would have uh, a, a different set of rights than than another group of Australians. Now, clearly, there was debate about what that meant and and whether uh, having uh, being able to make representation representations to Parliament is is actually a right or not. But still, the, the, a large proportion mm. of people thought that uh, this was this would lead to um, division, and 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 uh, they voted accordingly. And not surprisingly, um, the. Uh, People took their cues from the parties which they supported. Uh, so people who thought yeah. that they uh, would yeah. vote for the coalition, they voted no. 
people who said they would vote for Labor uh, were more likely to vote yes. So um, we still, yeah. uh, while there has been a decline in kind of primary votes uh, for the parties, people still do kind of yeah. uh, see themselves as, as being aligned with one party or Take the other, and I think you. that mattered. Yeah. Look, it's a really interesting study. Yeah. Head online if you want to know, find out more a bit short on time today. But Professor Nicholas Biddle, thank you.